Yeah. Call the meeting to order at, there's a lot of glare there, but I'm going to say it's 7.03. Um, Trustee Gould, would you uh, lead the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Capos, will you take roll, please? Trustee Bernal? Here. Trustee Villalobos? Trustee Levin? Here. Trustee Gould? Here. Trustee Chiakari? Here. Thank you. Trustee Villalobos is at her daughter's high school graduation. The district digitally records the audio portion of the meetings. The recorder is located in front of the board scribe. All recordings are kept in the superintendent's office for 30 days and are available during that time period for inspection by members of the public on district equipment without charge. As community service, Pacifica Community Television, PCT, records and broadcasts meetings. Thank you. Um, the board met in closed session regarding um, uh, CSEA and LSEA negotiations. Um, in addition, we talked about, we, we had a conference with legal counsel. Um, discussing anticipated litigation, and uh, no action was taken on either of these. Um, so, approval of the minutes. It's recommended that the board approve the minutes of the May 15, 2019 regular meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. All in favor. All in favor. <laughs> oh, so, all in favor. It's, it's not on the script. It's my first time. Okay. <laughs> so. Four passes, four zero. Thank you. All right. Uh, approval of the agenda and consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda will be approved with one motion, which is not debatable and which requires a unanimous vote for passage. If any member of the board, the superintendent, or the public so requests, any item shall be removed from this section and placed in the regular order of business following approval of the consent agenda. Are you going to ask for a motion for that? Or? Okay. Yeah, well, I was just letting people have a chance to move things out. But um, okay. do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll move to approve. Well, a second. All those in favor? Board passes 4 0. Thank you. All the way down there. Okay. Communications. This portion of the agenda is available to the public to address the board on any issue that is not on the agenda. The maximum time allowed for any speaker is three minutes. LSEA? Hello, how are you guys? Hi. Um, LSEA is very happy that we are done for this year and ready for negotiations for next year. Um, I also want to say thank you to our bargaining team who worked many hours uh, to get to the agreement and also all of our LSEA members who showed up and um, participated and were engaged during the entire process. And Christy also wanted to make a comment today. Hi, uh, Christy Novak, Access Equity and Innovation <coughs> Specialist for the district. Um, I'm actually here on behalf of Pacifica, Pacifica Education Foundation. Um, I do assist uh, helping them with messaging to the community. Um, they wanted to clarify what they do and do not fund for our district. Um, PEF currently supports our third, fourth, and fifth grade music program and music teacher aspects of our middle school program. Uh, music program, a full year of spark poetry experience for our fifth graders, and then professional development opportunities in-house uh, and also outside, particularly in the area of STEAM for our teachers. For our next school year, Pacifica Education Foundation has agreed to support the addition of science leads due to the ongoing transition of implementation of next generation science standards. Um, leads are defined as classroom teachers who are paid a stipend uh, in to assist in supporting their sites in particular areas. Specialists work directly with the leads on goals, ideas, and support for their sites in a collaborative manner and help to advocate for the needs identified by them. It is also a way to recognize teachers who are passionate about wanting to assist with progress implementation and to contribute to conversations. Conversations. Um, there was a miscommunication on these roles at the last board meeting, hence my 
statement to you, so I just wanted to have that clarified on the record. Um, and then also additionally, just as an LSC member and an educator, I'm very happy about the negotiations and I just want to give a shout out to LSCA and especially the bargaining team and thank you to the board so we can start a new year um, just on a positive note and we can get to the business of educating our kids. So thank you. Great. Uh, CSEA? Well, we're not full of good news. We, we are still in negotiations. Um, some of it is, is uh, we're, we're postponing a little bit uh, due to the surgery that I'm, I'm going to be going into next week. Uh, however, I'm, I'm hoping that in my absence and during recovery, we can get a couple of our issues resolved and at least get working on the uh, salary wage agreements. Uh, I think our negotiations on both sides have been working pretty diligently. We've, we've settled a few things that uh, needed to be done uh, to get our business uh, handled. And um, <clears throat> we're just looking forward to a, a continued success. So uh, we want to thank you for everything that's happened this year. And uh, we're going to keep working at it. Oh, and there's, that is perfect timing as well. <laughs> you, you can step to the board. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so people wishing to address the board, and that would be... I'm sorry, it, 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 it took a while for this to get here, but Cynthia Knowles. I'll try to be brief. I didn't really plan anything, but I am a resident of the Terranova townhomes, and I live j just directly below Ortega School. And um, since 2015, I have consistently emailed John, um, the former maintenance uh, manager, to maintain those drainages because they're consistently filled with water. They don't drain. They're not on a slope. And um, a couple of other residents have complained, but I've <coughs> helped out the HOA board uh, president to sort of work with the school, but it's usually just <coughs> writing email after email, asking to clean it out, even though it should be done on a regular basis. And the last email I got um, last July was saying we could commit to do this twice a year, but that's not even happening. And I just don't think more emails are going to do anything. And I'm ready to start planting in the drainage ditch right now because there's water back there all the time, but it just becomes algae filled and mosquito. It breeds mosquitoes right below the school. If anyone can help us get this done, it would be great, and I see Josie, I think you're always CC'd on the emails, but I don't really want to ask them to do it twice a year. I'd rather have it done three times a year, um, but I, if I could get some help on keeping it. I know you keep a safe environment. You do everything that you can, but I just think the breeding, the mosquito breeding ground is not necessary, and it's about a few feet from me. I think I'm just more concerned about children, but I think the algae consistently back there is, is not necessary. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it to our All right, um, board, or uh, sorry, correspondence. I do have two pieces of correspondence. Uh, one would be a uh, email that we received today from the LSEA president saying that the LSEA ratified their contract. So let me bring that to you. And then the second uh, email was something that was forwarded from Josie uh, from James uh, Arcala, who is the business, uh, one of the district uh, business managers in the county office of Ed. And uh, I just wanted to share that um, San Mateo County Office of Ed has reviewed the public disclosure of collective bargaining agreement documentation outlining the, the tentative agreement. Um, and uh, the proposed agreement is for the fiscal year and will retro back to July 1st. And the district plans to provide a 2% salary increase for all staff to July uh, 1st, 2018. As uh, Jerry did point out, we are still in negotiations with the with the other agencies, um, or with the other um, associations. And so uh, they, want to, they want us to make sure the total projected cost of the increase for salary and benefits is $418,600. The increase will lower the total available reserves in fiscal years 
1819, 1920, and 2021 to 4.15, 3.38, and 3.23 respectively. Uh, Pacifica School District uh, reserves at minimum. Uh, the Government Finance Officers Association recommends reserves at minimum equal to two months of average general fund operating expenditures or 17%. Um, but the above, uh, I'm sorry, who's testing me? Okay, good. Okay. Uh, the district plans to make $400,000 in budget reductions in 1920 and 250000 in 2021 to maintain the reserves above the minimum state standards in the out years. Uh, we're still finalizing those budget adjustments. Josie will talk to you a bit about that today. So based on their analysis, the county office concurs that uh, our, uh, on our assessment that it can meet the projected costs over time covered in the tentative agreement. However, they are recommending that we pay very close attention to those reserves. Board Superintendent Communications. Who would like to begin? I can, I can. Um, they, uh, attended the Housing for All, which um, was a meeting that the city held at IBL. And uh, it was the whole community together trying to figure out um, the best ways for Pacifica to go forward to help with the housing situation. It was their second one they've done, and um, I didn't was not able to attend the first one, but it was really informative and, and basically everybody realizing, you know, that there is a problem and they all need to work together to, to solve that. And um, there was a work study that we had for the workforce housing. I went to the Cabrilla Open House, which is always fun to see um, all the old teachers and whatever all the kids have been up to and there's a lot amount of art <laughs> there during their open house and then today we had a housing committee meeting again for workforce housing um, beginning to get the proposal in we bits some pieces to go forward with that um. <laughs> uh, I also attended the work study and the committee meeting today um, in addition, I had a meeting with Heather and Will to uh, discuss the LCAP process and um, what we've done and what we're going to be doing differently going forward. And I guess we'll probably talk about that more when we get to that agenda item. I attended the Ocean Shore Open House, which is always fun because they have their Oceans 411 exhibit and you can, this year you're walking through jellyfish and all kinds of really coral reef, crocheted and really exciting. And um, I think um, everyone was looking forward to two weeks left of school, um, which is now shorter. Um, what else? The workforce housing Elizabeth mm -hmm. talked about. Um, and we're going to have a small sort of subcommittee meeting tomorrow to talk more about um, the proposal before it hopefully comes to the whole board in June. Um, I don't think you're going to add anything to all that. Okay. <laughs> I don't have too much to add either. I was at the, the um, study meeting for workforce housing and Cabrillo, and um, it was... Uh, it was good. There was a lot of art. There was a lot of um, interesting stuff. Uh, I, I even walked through Miss Ellsburn's class, and uh, that was really good. Um, so I was kind of there both as, as a trustee, but also to, to visit my, my two little boys' classes. So, but I, I made it through all the classrooms and, and you know, saw, saw the older, what the older kids are doing as well. Um, I think that's about it. We, we met last. We Wednesday, did, but just to prepare for this. Yes. Right. Laverne and Jesse and I met last uh, week to prepare. Uh, so the following Thursday, after the board work study, I went to a um, Homes for All meeting on how to work with your neighbors around uh, issues, how to communicate around difficult issues like parking and traffic. And it was good timing because we just had that positive meeting. And it's about establishing relationships and making sure that when you say you're going to do something, you do it, and that uh, you recognize that it's the long-term relationship that matters. That was a really a great workshop. Um, our, we're feeling uh, good about the information presented, and we'll be in our subcommittee tomorrow. 
And then just one other set of communications is that I've, uh, we have two people that have submitted their paperwork as being interested candidates. So we know that we'll hold the interviews on the 19th, but there are probably another two or three others that are considering it. So uh, there's a lot of interest. Uh, a number of them are meeting with Laverne just to kind of find out what the duties are. But uh, if there get to be too many, she may need some help and support <laughs> on that one because it's a busy time. So that's exciting. And it's all right. District goals. The district values the goals provided in our local control accountability plan and strategic plan. All of our district board agenda items are tied to these goals. One or more goals are listed in the description of each board agenda item. The details for each of, uh, of those district goals can be accessed on our agenda online public page or by visiting the district website www.pacificasd.org under district, Administra uh, district Information Board of Trustees. Public Disclosure Collective Bargaining Agreements. Josie? Okay, Assembly Bill 1200 is the law that governs um, the fiscal health of school districts. And under that law, one of the things that um, the board needs to do is make a public disclosure outlining when you are giving compensation increases and um, demonstrate that you can afford to give the compensation increase. So this disclosure um, does cover all of the bargaining units. Um, that's how we do our budget even though we have not yet um, finalized negotiations with CSCA or the LSMA management group. So um, basically, as Heather mentioned, the county has done a thorough review of this disclosure. Um, the disclosure includes the current budget and then the cost of the 2% and um, the impact of that on our budget going out three years. And as Heather summarized, um, it is going into the district's reserves bringing us down to almost like 3.23% in, um, in year three. For 2018-19, um, when we're paying the $400,000 plus, it's coming out of reserve. Um, and then what we're doing is budgeting $400,000 of budget reductions for 2019-20. And that's going to be accomplished with um, a variety of staff reductions. And also we're budgeting, um, we didn't include in our adopted budget the STRS, but it's looking like the STRS reduction will go through, and I'll kind of go through that in the budget presentation. But we do include 400,000 of budget reductions next year, and then another 250,000 the following year. The disclosure also includes um, other things such as what you're paying for health insurance and retiree benefits. The county wants to see all of the costs when they do their review. So um, this all did kind of happen very quickly. We were able to settle with LSCA, um, I think it was Friday, and we immediately called the county, and they were, um, you know, very obliging to interview to review this for us, so that we could bring it to the board tonight. And so James did a thorough review along with his staff, and they um, concurred <coughs> with our analysis. But they did have some strong warnings when I spoke to them on the phone, and they said, "Can you really afford this? Are you are you sure?" And so, you know, we had to demonstrate to them that we are going to make this this work going three years out. So. Public disclosure, we will still work with our other bargaining um, unions, but we wanted to disclose this to the public tonight. Any discussion? Do we discuss this? No? Okay. It looks like this is an action item. Yeah. So we're going to go to vote. Good enough. All right. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll I'll second. All those in favor? Board passes 4-0. Thank you. Now we have kind of an interesting moment. It's 722 and we are opening the public hearing at 725 for the LCAP and LCFF. And my expert sitting over there says that we must wait until 725. Can we have a can song or something? Or can we, we have a entertain us? A song? Or, uh, <laughs> we can do a mindful minute. A mindful minute? We can pull out their guitar. Oh. We can think of all those people in Oklahoma that are having yeah. a hard Flint. time. Yeah. Can we go to the resolutions? <coughs> we can take a moment to wish yeah. Jerry well yes. with yes. your upcoming yes. surgery. All I think you. Yes. 
at the Jeopardy song playing. So, you know, we only got to wait a minute anyway. Yeah. Is that 35 seconds? Okay. We're going to say 30 years. 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 Sure. I did not know that we could skip oh. ahead. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. sorry. Right. Well, tonight we're bringing to you a memo of understanding between um, the district and San Mateo County, um, what used to be called BIDSA, now known as Induction Services. This is a really wonderful um, support for new teachers. And I've seen it over the years really uh, be a, a, a strong resource for <coughs> teachers who are um, in their first year after receiving their credentials. So I rec we recommend, we, we've had lots of success, and we recommend that we continue to participate in this program. Is that a one-year program or a two-year program? Two. And we have just one teacher that's the support, or like as a bit of. I, I think there can be um, as many teachers as we have who need it. We can, there can be bits of, uh, or induction support teachers assigned. Oh, okay. Yeah. Typically, we work with the county, uh, their coaches and providers on that end. I think uh, the one that you might be thinking of is we were scrambling for. Uh, someone who was a late hire and the county didn't have someone and so we worked uh, to get okay try yeah. to get someone on our end of that mm -hmm. okay but, so, so just clarification I mean the bits and induction it's it's very very common across mm -hmm. all districts so so oh, yeah. I mean we you know by not having this that would put us at a real competitive disadvantage mm -hmm. in oh, terms of hiring so I just oh, wanted yeah. to put that put that out oh, there yeah, right. I mean you know you, you know, it's you, I think You'd only not offer this if you absolutely could not. <laughs> right. Right. Agreed. So, so this sounds yeah. like it's kind a, of a no-brainer to me. It's a huge value yeah. for mm -hmm. everyone involved. Mm -hmm. Is that enough discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's put it to the vote, shall we? Do I have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. I'll second it. All those in favor? Board passes four zero. Thank you. We're now at our 725 deadline. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Oh, I'm sorry, here I'm sleeping. Uh, public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the 17, uh, the 2017 2020 LCAP and LCFF. And that would be Mr. Will Lucy will present. All right, so, so we're talking about the LCAP again. Um, we're kind of on the latter end of this process. Um, this is the public hearing piece. Um, I don't have too many slides here because uh, many of this information you've seen before, but I did um, want to make sure I made note of some highlights um, of, of things that have occurred since our last time talking about this. You have the uh, copy of the draft of the LCAP. Um, these are the activities that we were involved in, in um, editing and creating this uh, this um, LCAP. Again, I want to point out that the LCAP is a 2017-2020 LCAP. So many of the, uh, well, all of the goals and many of the <coughs> outcomes and metrics are, are pretty much the same as they were uh, 2017 when we first started. Um, but actions have changed and been adjusted and, and changed to it. So these are all the activities that we went through, meetings that we had around, around the LCAP. Um, highlights and updates. I'll start with metrics. Um, for the, this, this is the 1920s. These are the, 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 some of the changes. There's adjustments to the target of a number of teachers without full credentials. I think we went from uh, eight to, to four. Um, uh, so that was changed under goal one. And then there was also the adjustment of targets for instructional materials. Um, material implementation metric. Uh, based on actuals. So the actuals um, uh, gave us an opportunity to change those targets for 1920. Um, 
uh, based on those off those, act, uh, off those uh, actions. And then we know this already, but I felt like it was an important metric to update is that we are no longer um, uh, giving the CELT. Uh, no one in California is giving the CELT anymore, um, which is the California English Language Development Test, which was replaced by the LPAC. So that uh, metric that was associated with the CELT was removed um, from, from goal two. Um, the highlights with regards to uh, goal one, um, there were uh, 1.3, uh, goal 1.3 included uh, instructional leadership and coaching for site administrators. Goal 1.6 um, was we're adopting a 6-8 uh, curriculum and, and piloting <coughs> supplemental uh, curriculum support as those pieces were added to that uh, to that action. Uh, we updated the facility uh, master plans to be inclusive of a planning process uh, that, that was um, that and, and, and was inclusive of actions from bond funding. Um, we edited a, uh, action 1.9 which was with regards to participation and achievement on the CAS scores uh, in particularly for our special ed students. Um, that was uh, an action that was uh, terminated by the uh, use of our by the review of, by our performance indicator review um, and then we uh, changed the action 1.2 from continue to focus on workforce housing to build workforce housing. So uh, um, those were some highlights of actions that were changed or adjusted for goal one. Goal two, um, 2.2 was removed because it was already inclusive in 1.1, 1 1.10, 1 and 3.1. Um, I can go into specifics of that. I don't have it in front of me, but it's it, it's it's those professional development opportunities were um, already highlighted in other actions. Uh, 2.3, we included a, a special ed teachers as part of the collab as collaboration, and we also added at Wednesday as a possible place for early uh, uh, for collaboration time for general ed and special ed. That's the Wednesday when there's an early release at the schools. Um, and then 2.9, we added a partnership with our county librarian, county librarian to help access for families to library and online resources. Um, that was added to that, to action nine. Um, 2.17, 2, uh, 2 the element pertaining to the IEP process was inclusive of dialogue about student participation and cast testing. That was a, an added uh, element in making sure that within the IEP process that there is dialogue about uh, participation in the CAS testing. That, uh, that is part of the dialogue within the IEP. And then we added three actions. Um, 18, 19, and 20 addressing um, improvements for a data assessment system, uh, professional development aligning, uh, 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 professional development in aligning and modifying special ed instruction to adopt the curriculum and providing counseling for students in special ed and their families. Goal three, we uh, 3.1, we added a component uh, to this action for providing uh, materials and repair to, to our third through eighth grade music program. 3.3, uh, we reworded actions to focus more on schools determining parent education levels based on survey results. Um, 3.4, we added uh, keeping parents informed of students' progress around IEP alignment, specifically with general ed standards and curriculum. So, um, having a little more focus of that piece. Uh, so that was an added piece to that. Uh, and 3.16 uh, was an added action for school teams to participate in our Family Engagement Learning Institute uh, with the purpose of linking uh, engagement to learning uh, and to build effective family engagement practices, which we'll be participating in this coming, upcoming uh, summer. Um, any Questions? Yes. A um, few clarifications. Um, 
as we move forward with this next year we are going to be including all the comments yes. from the different stakeholder groups yes. um, okay and then are we still going to do that idea where we're kind of parking things that we think are good ideas but maybe we're not working on right now we're going to have sort of a separate but that's in the working yeah. model not the official not the yeah, that's okay right. yeah, wish list. the wish list or yeah, yeah. Um, on your goal two actions the um, 2.3 includes special ed teacher part of collaboration added Wednesday early release days how often do you see that actually happening because um, early early out Wednesdays they have staff meetings and other things so I'm just wondering how like would do you think that would be like once a month or is it going to be dependent on the site or what or once a quarter or it will be really dependent on, on the, I would say it would be dependent on the site. Mm -hmm. I know that there's, right now, there's a lot of work going into how those Wednesdays are being used. Mm -hmm. um, and those early release times, Wednesdays being used. But to the most, as much as possible, it would be a good opportunity to be able to use that to, if there was collaboration occurring, that the collaboration would be with Gen Ed and Special Ed. And that's going to be site dependent. So, I mean, is it possible that one site would have more of that collaboration time than another site, or...? Um, yeah, I guess that would be a possibility, but we also are looking at the department. So, that, so I know that, that there's going to be a big um, push in training specifically special ed um, mm -hmm. um, staff on various aspects of uh, special ed mm -hmm. um, and special ed instruction, and I know that coming out of that there will be a need for collaboration time between mm -hmm. the special ed and the general ed right because of that because of having those i think you were going to call them special ed academies and yeah yeah can i jump in yeah, just sure. a little bit just to um I, we haven't really landed on a firm number but probably quarterly sounds like it might be a reasonable expectation mm -hmm. but we had also talked about we don't want to just say here's a collaboration day go for it mm -hmm. we want to have some meaningful uh, topics and structure we want to support the principals and the site staff in having it be a useful time so we're going to give some thought into <laughs> what those will look like mm -hmm. at least for the first year and you know then if it catches hold we can look at other other ways of presenting those opportunities or more frequent ways more frequent opportunities. Okay. Yeah, there's, good, there's definitely going to be like this springboard, these these special ed uh, needs to be springboard, but there'll also be the need based on, from, from the sites mm -hmm. uh, for collaboration, what those collaborations should be, how those collaborations should be useful so that they're impactful. Right. So it's going to be a combination of that. So it's, it's really hard to determine, it, you know, a number of times that okay. that will occur. Okay. That and makes sense. You know, the, main, the main thing is to try to call it out that that is. <coughs> sure. For that, you know. <clears throat> okay, a few more. You know me. Um, oops, so thank you. Um, so in this draft, which, thank you, Will, for all this work. Um, so I'm looking at, in goal three, you have um, a comment about library, library or action and service. Library media staff to offer parent workshops on how to use tools for student information. Now, some of our sites, don't they have volunteers in their school libraries? So are you expecting the volunteers to be leading some of that? Um, I, I don't think it would be appropriate to to make that assumption in mm -hmm. an LCAP document. And are you looking at the annual update or are you looking at the GAS or the gift the, the, the... I'm looking at page 41 in this draft. Does it say annual update above that? Do you want me to bring it over? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure I click on the right part. Yeah, so this is this is the annual update. Okay. So in the in the gas section under that same thing, there will mm -hmm. be an update of what is actually happening in 1920, what we were planning for 19 and 20. This is just a review of what happened last year. So this is what was planned, and this is what actually. Right, occurred. but this is to offer parent workshops. Yeah. So in the gas in the gas 
section or the, the, the 1920 section, that was what we wanted to offer uh -huh. um, uh, for this year. And right. notice there's nothing in the actual. Right. So actually it's in but I'm trying to see how that would, what you're thinking, how that would work. Do you understand what yeah. I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah. So that, that particular action got modified mm -hmm. because we, we, all, we didn't this year use our library media technician to give officially designed um, trainings for a parent right. right there so we have to think about a different model because that didn't actually occur so mm -hmm. we had to modify that action and I, I don't know the wording on the okay on correlating to it but I'm just but thinking that at the schools that don't have an actual library media staff yeah so all of our schools now have there a lot uh, library media staff. Uh, there was a period of time that Valimar did not. Ms. Hall has stepped in to, to okay. finish out the year for that. And next year we'll still be and fully staffed. And I think staffed. we might have yes. just hired for yeah. that. She, she okay. Start up. I can answer that. Thank you. <laughs> Mary, I forgot her last name, but she started on May 28th. Okay. I'm actually meeting with her on Friday just to go over some stuff. Great. As well. So we're all fully staffed now. And she's going to library camp. She is kind of like a and CSEA uh, reminds, me, reminds us regularly during our meetings that it's not appropriate for volunteer staff to take the jobs of yeah. unfilled positions. Okay, thank you. I have one more. Sure. Okay. So, again, under the actions, and this is still in 3.11. Will request if needed the school counselor and our mental health counselor to determine whether certain mental health systems are the result of placements and abilities. And I believe this is on um, foster youth. And um, and the actual is exactly the same wording, but I'm just wondering what that would look like. So. If you can state it again, that's Let under. Because <laughs> I, 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 I should have made a copy. Sorry. No, I should have made a copy of this. We'll, re we'll request if needed. Yeah, mental health uh, counselor for service. So this is under the uh, uh, the student service right. student service administrator serves as case managers for identified uh, foster youth. So the right. idea is, so if those uh, foster youth, mm -hmm. right. Will if they if they are in need of a uh, of, of counseling service or supports a request will be made through uh, through um, school counselors and mental health. So those school counselors that are already assigned to school sites or even if they're not on sites, they will be able to support the foster youth. Right. So who's requesting? The the case manager. The case so manager that, that would for, be that would be okay. our, that would be our pu uh, pupil service. Got it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Good questions. That's it. Um, someone else, Jesse. So, so, Will, I wanted to, or sorry, Mr. Lucy, um, I wanted to <laughs> to talk talk. Uh, okay, Will, um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about two point four, and and that that is contracting for data tools, and trying to make use. And so it doesn't look. I mean, the the actions and the services and the gas are sort of identical for the the three years that we have. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this, and um, it, it's not a huge ticket item. It's like twenty grand or something like that. You know, I can't remember what exactly what it was. Um, but I also want to make sure, even though it's a relatively smaller amount of money, that it's being used wisely. And um, in particular, I know that you have to build your skills here at the central office, but what I'm most concerned about is that this knowledge gets passed down and there's buy-in obtained from the school sites, right? And I want to make sure that they're on board and that there's ample time spent with them to understand their needs and how we can leverage these tools to best serve their needs. So that maybe it's more of a comment. I know it's like, was there a question there? It's like, no, there wasn't a question there. But it was more more of a comment. So I just so wanted I, to. I I I am one hundred percent behind you. It's one of the things I was just talking about it today. Okay. That we are with our with our the data systems that we have in place right now, which are going through a big huge review process, and we are looking at them 
you know, to, strategically to make sure first that we are, even though it's a small amount, but I think twenty thousand is a lot amount. Um, is is that that they that we're we're getting our bang for our buck number one, and second that they're being used by the end user that the, the end user is, is utilizing them. So we've been working with DataZone in particular, um, and we've been using with uh, we've been getting some help from consultants to really. The, we're kind of in a precarious position because there's a lot of, of buy-in to use data zone, but there's a lot of, 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 of training that needs to be involved in about how to utilize it. And not just how to actually manipulate the system to pull out data, but actually to, to go to the next level of analyzing it and being able to, to uh, kind of uh, put things together and make, and make true actions in your LCAP that are based on it. So yeah, I, I, I completely agree uh, with that, and that's something that has been, ha ha since we got that as zone, that's been something that we've been looking at and, and quite honestly stumbling through, right? Um, this year seems like the first year that we feel like we're getting a little bit of a grip, but we're not, we're not totally there totally at all, so. Okay, so I, I guess I also just wanna make sure that the, the $20,000 kind of covers the central office side of it, but I think that we have to try to free up some time in order to interact yeah. with the with the schools, and I'm not sure how that's going to play out. But we should we should think, or you you guys should think about that. One place that we're going to start with that is um, is with our so we have the lead. So we this next year we'll have a science lead, but we also have an English language arts, a math, and a uh, I lead, a kind of a technology lead, and. Um, they have worked with the specialists, and next year we're going to have uh, about half of the time with uh, specialists and principals working <coughs> together. So at site teams, doing uh, some data walks and look at the data and identifying what is what is something the school needs to focus on, and um, kind of narrowing down something that might make a difference quickly, and going through a. a improvement process, uh, beginning to look at the data. So while it, there is, you know, professional development that's needed, it's also needing to get started in a way that's meaningful for the teachers, and we felt like that was a, a good kind of first step. Our, our panorama data and our data that's in data zone is not unattainable. Uh, we have stopped our uh, contract with Illuminate because there were some, some, I, I want to say bad press, or it didn't, it wasn't, effective for people felt like it was really hard to get to the data and it was hard to put in and so we're moving away from Illuminate but we, we do want to make it accessible and give people a reason to use it so uh, we'll be working with the principals around leaving some of that at their school sites as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Anything else? The school, the trustee rules, I think I saw a thought there. Um, <clears throat> I just feel like as long as I've uh, been in this seat, there is, um, we've been trying to figure out how to analyze our data and what to do <laughs> with it and how to use the data systems. And it never seems like we make much progress on it. But you're new at this seat, so maybe you'll be able to. We have a long way to. We have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. But it, it, if you look at things that make a difference in school districts and schools, it's really understanding what your data is, what it means, what it isn't. Uh, that's another kind of piece around that, and how to use it meaningful. How to use it as part of your routine. Okay. Shall we move on? Sure. Okay, so public hearing 2019 2020 budget. Okay, so what would you like to do? Take it from here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, again, we have a balanced approach with our budget with people, operations, and program. Um, here's a summary of what the state, the governor's um, state budget proposal was during the May revision. Um, he did propose a 3.26% COLA, 
and our local control funding formula is fully funded. Um, so now we're in a COLA environment. <coughs> There's no discretionary funds budgeted in the main revision. Um, special ed and child nutrition will receive the same COLA. Now we're starting to hear news that the budget is going through the conference uh, committee. It's already gone through the assembly and the house. And I'm hearing the COLA, um, they're look, one of them proposed a 3.88% COLA. So as it goes through the conference committee, we'll see how that changes. And then when the final June budget comes out, we'll do revisions. So that's kind of what, what I'm hearing as of today. Um, this is a comparison of the state COLA percentage from the May revision, and it compares it to what um, Governor Newsom proposed in January, what his change was in May, and then we'll, we'll see where it, it lands us in June. But for 1920, there was a slight uh, decline. And then 2021 and 21 22, you can see the changes a plus 14% and a minus 12%. And so now we'll see um, if it is truly 3.88%, we'll, we'll show an increase in our final budget. And then just kind of um, a review of what the local control funding formula is. Um, what the COLA brings is there's an amount per, a grant amount per student, which is in the chart below. Um, K through 3 receive $7,459 per student. And then when you add the COLA, it's about $7,700. And that reflects all the grade spans and the funding that we receive per student um, based on grade levels. This is something that I heard um, new was that we hadn't talked about before was the, um, the governor may revise he, uh, housing is one of his strong initiatives. And so there might be a little bit of funding for school districts um, for technical assistance. So we're a little bit farther along in the process with our workforce housing as far as technical assistance because we've done a lot of the um, pre-construction work. But if there is some funding, we'll apply for it and see if we can recover some of the costs that um, we've incurred for workforce housing. And then we had talked a lot about this the last time. Um, the governor really wanted to help school districts and help the pension funds. And so he had proposed in January to um, two portions of CalSTRS. The CalSTRS is the teacher's retirement system, which is um, severely underfunded, and, and employers are paying more and more out of pocket every year towards that. So. The governor wanted to put in some funds um, towards STRS that would buy down the liability for employers. And then he also proposed to decrease the percentage ongoing, which would really help districts, school districts' budgets as far as um, decreasing the percentage that we pay for, him, for the teachers' pensions. And so he proposed it in January, and then that proposal held in May. And when you look at it going through the Senate and the Assembly, both, um, both houses are in favor of reducing the STRS contribution for employers. So um, hopefully that will pass in the final state budget. Um, this next slide is just a, um, a graph that shows you where this current state law is for how much we contribute to STRS and what his proposal was. So you can see the um, kind of purplish line is where we are and then what he's proposing. So for 1920, it is um, quite a bit of a reduction from 18, over 18% 18 to 17% and it could be further reduced in the final June budget. Um, and just kind of to let you know, we did not include this in our, in our proposed budget because there's been many times when these proposals come through and then the June budget doesn't include them. So as a, as a conservative budget, it's not included in our budget at this time. And then um, here's a, the revenue assumptions we used in building our budget. Our enrollment has remained steady. Um, we're projecting 2,980 students the 3.26% COLA, and then the standard amounts for the lottery, um, both unrestricted and restricted. And then we have what's called the um, mandated cost block grant, which is $31 per student. And we did not budget any additional discretionary funds. And then expenditures, um, just kind of some of the bigger assumptions. We did increase staffing. We have, you know, we had a large kindergarten lottery this year enrollment, and so we in increased TK and kindergarten. Um, teachers and we use the current state law for the STRS contribution and also the current CalPERS um, approved rates for the classified classified employees are in what's called the CalPERS retirement system and so um, currently we're, we're um, paying 20% of a person's salary towards their retirement towards their pensions and then we also budgeted a health benefit increase of 5% it's looking like the Kaiser rate increase is around the 3% range. Um, so um, that'll help us when we finalize our budget. 
um, in first interim. And then we also included employee step and column, which is ranging from 1 to 2.5%. As employees um, move up each year, they do get an increase in their salary um, based on their years of service. So kind of a snapshot of what these proposals mean for Pacifica. The COLA, 750000 And then the STRS was about 400000 based on his proposal, but that, again, is not included in our budget. We did include the, um, the COLA funding, but not the STRS. And then this is really just um, a picture of our general fund revenues. You can see pur the purple is really all of our Pacifica funds are state funds. It's a combination of property taxes, what they call the local control funding formula. We are heavily dependent on state funds. We get very little federal funding, um, very little local funding. It's, it's, our budget is basically all dependent on the state. And then restricted, the unrestricted um, general fund, you can see it's all of our, most of our budget is the, the employees, the certificated employees, the classified <coughs> and health benefits is the majority of our budget. So here's a, um, a summary of the 1920 general fund. And this, is, um, this budget was prepared prior to settling with um, the teachers' union, so we don't have those expenditures currently in the budget. It'll be a revision at first in <coughs> But it just gives you a summary um, so you don't have to wait through the hundreds of pages of the budget. You can see the unrestricted general fund um, and the restricted and there is a deficit um, budgeted of 71000 and that's really it's, it's a little bit misleading because we're also budgeting a transfer from Fund 17 of 200000 So the deficit is really in the 300000 range. And with um, the anticipated employee compensation, you, we're, we're looking at um, a much higher deficit for 2019-20. And if you go back to the um, public dis disclosure document that the board um, reviewed earlier, you will see the revised figures with the compensation increase in there. Summary of contributions, um, by law we have to contribute to restrictive maintenance, and then we also contribute to special education because the federal and state government do not adequately, adequately fund um, the needs of our special ed students. So here's a three-year projection before the settlement of our unrestricted um, general fund, and you can see um, the 4.7%, 4.48%, and 4.93% and it's now more accurately reflected in the AB 1200 disclosure that was reviewed earlier. So these figures will all be revised when, um, when the state budget is passed and all of our compensation agreements are settled. We'll come back to you at first interim, at first interim with revised figures. And again, this just there is a $200,000 transfer, so the deficit is a little bit misleading because we're using reserves to fund our deficits. In the, in the 1920 and 2021 school years. So again, we, we kind of review this a lot with the board. It's just the caution um, of multi-year. multi, multi -year. When we're in a low COLA environment, we really have to um, be mindful of um, unanticipated events that could occur. We're, we're heavily dependent on the state, um, so we really just need to be cognizant of that. And we had talked about maintaining higher than a 3% reserve going forward. Again, just the reserve, not knowing what, what could happen from year to year. We did have some, some unanticipated costs last year, and so we just need to, again, be mindful of our cash management and fluctuations in enrollment and things that could affect the, the, um, the bottom line in the budget. And this is kind of a review as well. School Services puts this chart together every year. They get the data from all the school districts. Um, they do have recommendations on what reserves should be. And this shows you that most, an average elementary school district has a 20% reserve. Uh, for 1718 Pacifica School District, kind of 6%. Um, there, there was a time when the board really held firm to maintaining a 6% reserve. And in the, in the economy and in a COLA environment, we just have not been able to maintain that. Um, we dropped down to 4.9%. We're going to be below 4% next year. Um, so just something we need to work on as we move forward. This is a summary of all the funds, and I can kind of just kind of go through the funds and what their use is for. The general fund, um, the, ca the cafeteria fund is our child nutrition fund, and it carries a balance of um, a couple of two to three months of operating expenses just for positive cash. Deferred maintenance 
is um, the fund where you report any kind of repairs to buildings, asphalt, fencing, and historically the state used to um, pr provide funding for deferred maintenance, and the districts used to match that funding, and it was $240,000. <coughs> Our board was contributing $240,000 until this year. When we had adopted our budget last year, it was one of the cuts that was done in the budget adoption process. So the board is currently contributing $40,000, which we will need to look at because that is not sufficient to fund the types of repairs that need to be done, like the drainage at Ortega and those types of things. Because you can't use the bond funding for certain types of repairs. So it's another thing we need to look at. The special reserve fund is um, fund 17, the additional reserve that the board has been holding. And you can see a minus 190,000. That's the $200,000 transfer net of interest earnings. And then retirement benefits. Um, we do fund for um, employees when they retire. If they work for the district for a certain period of time, they do receive 10 years of retirement benefits. And we did bring an actuary report to the board. It's included in the audit report. You should really have about $10 million set aside if you were to fund, if we were to cease existence today and you had to fund all of the benefits going forward, that's the amount of funds that you would need. Our district currently uses um, pay-as-you-bill method. So we just pay each year. <coughs> and we keep a balance in the retiree benefit fund just for cash flow. So that's that. And then the building fund is our measure O bond funding. So 17.8 million, and um, we're going to start spending that next year. And then capital facilities is fund 40. That is, um, oh no, that's fund 25. That's where we keep developer fees. And those are restricted funds um, in areas of housing development. And so we need to strategize on how we're going to spend those funds. And then capital outlay is the um, fund 40. And that is where the sale of site funds is deposited. And we're currently spending that on the Odstad workforce housing. Um, and then the tax override is a county. It's a county pass-through fund for the <coughs> So just kind of planning for the other funds. We know we contribute 56000 to child nutrition. And we know that we're contributing 40000 to deferred maintenance. And hopefully we can take um, another look at that as we move forward. And then the parcel tax report, I don't think I had this on the last um, presentation, but I wanted to make sure that everybody saw how we're spending our parcel tax funds. Um, we're very grateful to the community that renewed for 10 years of parcel tax at about $1.3 million. And you can kind of see the various categories. Library is one of the um, programs the board chose to fund, and that pays for four hours of library support in every school. Um, it does fund six to seven teacher positions, and then the, the um, BITSA program that Maria just brought forward to you is paid for with parcel tax funds, the counseling, outdoor education, school gardens. Um, and so we're projected to just carry a small balance at the end, $13,000 of parcel tax funds. So next steps is um, we're waiting for the final state budget in June. And then we will um, begin revising our, well, I, I guess we're also going to have another meeting next, we're going to go through this again next Wednesday. Um, and that's when we're going to ask the board to adopt the budget. And then when the state budget is finalized, we will bring revisions to you in the fall because we really don't have all of our staffing and all of the revenues and expenditures. So we'll work through the summer to um, bring a revision back to you when, when you return in the fall. So. Uh, that's about it. Do we have any questions or comments? I know you guys had time to discuss it last Wednesday. And <laughs> same, sorry. I, I wasn't able to shorten it, but next week it will be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any questions, just a comment that we're, you know, we're living on a very, very thin margin. Mm -hmm. I'll be really, really careful. Anybody else? No. Okay, moving on to 10D, public hearing reserves in excess of state minimum level. This is a requirement uh, by the state that if you have reserves in excess of what the state calls the minimum reserve is 3% for a school district of our size that you need to make a public document and uh, state 
why you have those reserves and, and what you plan to use those reserves for. So there's some documents attached, which basically, um, I'll just tell you what the first document is. It just shows that the ending fund balance is um, you know, $567,000 above the 3%, and we, we designated it to cover operating deficits. So there's three, and Will brought it up right there. So there's three documents for 1920, 2021, and 21, 22, and it basically shows that you're using the reserve to fund the deficit. And again, this document does not include compensation agreements, so it would be much less to explain. But we are required to explain why we have more than 3%. So it's really just not even an action item, it's for the board's review. All right. Any discussion on this? So we have to review it if it is more than three percent, mm -hmm. and then and we can't accept a budget that has less than three percent. So correct. <laughs> and three percent is so minimal. It's mm -hmm. kind of shocking that that's what they say a district of our size. I mean, that would last us a no, week, no, two weeks. Not, not even some two weeks. Yeah, so, so so I think you gave me the I, I wrote down in my notes here two months of operating expenses was a, approximately equal to a seventeen percent reserve. Is, did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Right. But then if you're if you have more students, you have a less reserve. If you have more students, you will get more funding. Right. We've been but the percent reserve. You get two and a half. Oh, the state has um, a matrix first, and there's a range of where the school district lies, and we're in the 3% range. Yeah. But the large districts are two and a half, aren't they? I don't, I don't know. Two and a half seems really low. Okay. But I, I it think could that's be the last state, thing I read. The state minimum requirement for them. Yeah. So that doesn't make sense either. No. Yeah. The large no, district only needs to keep two and a half percent reserve. Okay. Well, they're, because of economies of scale, their per pupil costs should be lower a little bit. I haven't seen the schedule, but that's mm -hmm. probably what, what the, the rationale is, I would think. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're at 10E, Tension Agreement between PSD and LSEA. <clears throat> well, you've we heard it a few times tonight that we um, have, are bringing forward some good news and we thank you for your support through the process. Um, Josie and I are very happy to report that we have reached a tentative agreement with the with LSEA um, after a year of really honest, good, hard work. I think it was a really um, it wasn't always an easy process, but it was a it was a good, pro positive process. Um, so I, I'm really proud of the work that the whole team did together. Mm -hmm. I think Ethan and Ellie and, and Ellie, but yes, mm -hmm. Ellie that was part of the district um, negotiating team. So um, what I have, what we've brought forward to you is the um, tentative, the, the signed tentative agreement, and it comes with it are attached some of the um, other um, TAs that we have agreed to during the course of the year. Um, um, during negotiations meetings. If you would like me to review them with you, I can do that briefly. Or if you have any questions about the attachments other than the actual salary agreement, I can review them or not. It's up to you. I already reviewed. You did. Don't need to. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Just a minute. So this is an action item. Recommend that the board approve the <laughs> <laughs> It would be our recommendation. I will happily make a motion to approve. A second. All in favor. Board passes 4 0. Thank you. All right. All right, we already went over 10 F, so we're going to skip to 10 G. <clears throat> this is Josie. Okay, thank you. The um, protection account was something that was established by the state with the passage of Prop 30. And um, when you go back several years, this was passed because the state was in a deficit position and they were not paying school districts 
the amount that they owe school districts. So it was creating a, a hardship for many school districts, cash flow issues, because I remember closing the book some year and they owed us $2 million. And for a small school district with such minimal reserves, that, that had a huge impact on us. We had to borrow money in order to meet our cash flow needs from June to July, August, when the state finally did pay us. And so now there's this education protection account, and so they pay us quarterly based on the funds they receive from Prop 30, and we need to make public the amount we receive from Prop 30 and how we're spending the funds. And so there is an attachment that we receive $3.8 million, and the funds go to instruction, the whole $3.8 million. And once this is made public, we will post it on our website, and there is a resolution attached for the board to um, review and, and approve stating how we um, spend the education protection account funds. It's a routine item now that we do every year. So just for clarification, this sort of alleviates the need to do trans, right? The cross year trans, yes. Yeah. Because there was a time when they owed us so much money and they weren't yeah. paying us until August, September that we were borrowing money yeah. across. And, pay, and paying interest on that. Paying, mm -hmm. high, yeah, paying interest, exactly. But the state didn't pay us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is an action item. Do I have a motion to? I'll make a motion. A second. All I'll those second. in favor? Board passes 4 0. Thank you. All right. This brings us to 11. Board bylaws, board policies, and administrative regulations. I can speak to this one actually just very simply because I'm the one that put it back on for first reading. So when it got pulled around the inter-district attendance, um, I said we'd bring it back and then it's Friday afternoon and we're posting the agenda and it's so much easier to put these as a chunk as opposed to pulling one out. So that's why they're all out. We didn't intend for you to read them again. Just a little bit of clarification on the inter-district attendance is that first of all, um, none of the districts in San Mateo County have any written agreements. So there's been kind of a casual agreement with Jefferson and others, but there is no written agreement whatsoever. I, I think there's interest countywide to have one, but we, we don't currently have one. So the other question that uh, Kathy brought up last week was around um, making an agreement for five years because for the students that seems very awkward oops the agreement's up um, but the agreement that the thought that they're uh, concerned about putting a five-year term on is the agreement with another school district and that's just so that you would review that our agreements with students are typically from year to year obviously if we give them a spot we want them to stay in there if we if we always can do that but um, but the agreement if we were to enter one with another school district was to be for five years, we just struck that part out so that there's no term. So when okay. we enter a direct uh, a, a direct agreement with another school district, we wouldn't term limit. I, I would guess that there's probably ed code around it being every five years. And it's, it's always practical to review those things because you want to make sure that you have room for students, that you can afford to take the students. We can think of a couple situations where it's more expensive uh, mm -hmm. in that kind of situation. So, so just FYI, we took the term limit out, but the agreement was with the district, and we don't, we would like to enter it, but we're not actively seeking that. Okay. Other than that, they were all as described last time. So this is for first reading. We'll bring that back. Uh, onto the consent calendar for second reading unless there are any other questions. Thanks. All right. So any discussion behind that point? Makes sense. So it's All clear right. now. All right. This brings us to wow, I think we're ahead of schedule by four minutes. Right. Fu future agenda items. I received some good news today during our workforce housing meeting, which uh, we were worried about making sure that we were all available to make important decisions around workforce housing during the summer. And should on uh, June 12th it look positive and we enter into negotiations, it's really quite clear that we would be lucky to have something to bring to one of our August board meetings. So 
I believe uh, next week we can bring our uh, cancellation of the July board meeting. Uh, and that would allow you more time with your family uh, during vacation, and it would allow staff more time for vacation. So that's my only future agenda item. Okay. That would be much appreciated after the last month or two. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. <laughs> every Wednesday. <laughs> I like seeing you guys every Wednesday. Yeah, not that I don't enjoy it. Does anyone else have future agenda items they would like to? Andrea? No. <laughs> <laughs> I see June 19th. All right. Well, looks like can we adjourn early? We allowed absolutely allow. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Meeting is adjourned at 8:13. All right. Good job. Good job, Thank you. Yeah. Good job, Justin. Trying on a position to see if you can do it.